yes welcome back to the building connection session in last class we have dealt with the design procedure for calculating the size of the weld using the three sides or four side welding this is a design procedure correct now we'll be having the welding and welder connection bracket connection problems okay so next question a bracket plate is welded to a flange of column ISHB ISHB 200 as shown in figure as shown in figure calculate the size of the world calculate the size of the world required required to support required to support the factored load <coughs> the factored load of 100 kilonewtons assume assume a fee photon or fee photon great speed the bracket place plate is welded to a flange of column ishb 200 as shown in figure calculate the size of the weld required to support the factor load of 100 kilonewtons assume a fee photon great speed okay the bracket plate is begun like this So it has been connected to the flange. This is the packet plate. And this is the column. Okay. The axis, X and Y axis. So they have given the load of 100 kilonewtons which is staying away from 100 mm from the end of the flange okay they have welded here which is three sets welding and they have given the measurement of the connection line plate 150 here okay and this is 260 okay before starting this the design process states first step is to calculate the centroid character so we have to first calculate the distance from here to here that will be your x bar okay so the further we can easily calculate it. So what we will do here is we will calculate considering a separate weld connections. So this is 150, this is 260, this is 150. And this is x6 y y so it is the x bar okay so if you measure this this will be your r this will be inclination angle of theta got it so you can divide this as 130 130 so here your width will be 150 your D will depth will be 260. B, D. D is 150. D is 260. We know how to calculate the centroid distance, which you will be learning in the basic civil engineering. If you don't know, if you like such a case, you can directly take the x bar is equal to b square divided by 
2 b must be you can take this formula and you can calculate so basically directly you can get the answers so 150 square divided by 2 times of 150 plus 260 so x bar will be equal to 40.18 ml so now my eccentricity will be from here to the load so center from to the load so eccentricity e Hundred plus. So if this is forty point one eight, so remaining this one fifty minus forty point n eight will be one not nine point eight two. This is the distance. So hundred plus one not nine point eight two will give you the e two not nine point eight two mm. Next, length of the weld. So, length of the weld. There are three sections, three side welding. So, it will be L1 plus L2 plus L3. So, it is 260 plus 150 plus 150. So, it is 560 mm. Next, calculate the load due to direct shear FP. P divided by the L. So it is P is 100 divided by length 560 mm. So it will be 178.5 Newton per millimeter. Okay, 100 kilotons divided by millimeter 360, you get 178.5 Newton per millimeter. Next. Calculate the torsional moment m is equal to p into e. So 100 into e is 2.8.2. Uh, so it is 2.8.2 uh, into 6 motor m. So find out the radial direction, so the radial distance R. So R is equal to Pythagoras theorem, 109.82 square plus 130 square. It's simple here, look at the figure, 109, 130. Pythagoras theorem, I'm finding the hypotenuse R. Correct. So it will be square root of 109.82 square plus 130 square. So your radial distance R will be is equal to 170.17 mm. Okay. Now considering one mm thickness, find out polar moment of inertia Ix, I, I, Ix, Iy, Iy. When you add Ix plus Iy, you will get the polar moment Ip. Okay. First we will find out the Ix considering the one mm thickness. So Ix will be is equal to Ixx plus area into Y bar square. We all know about to calculate this considering V11. So it is 1 into 260 cube divided by 12 plus 150 into 1 cube divided by 12 into 2 sections. Simple. Ix is equal to Ixx plus area into y bar square. So Ixx, so consider this one. So width will be 1 into 260 cube divided by 12 plus uh, one more area is 150 into 1 cube divided by 12 into 2 times 2 figures are there, 2 rectangles are there, plus into 2. So it is 1 into 260 cube by 12 plus 150 into 1 cube divided by 12 into 2. 
plus 2 times of center of direction 1 into 150 into 130 square. So it will be 6.54 10 raised to 6 millimeter power of 4. Similarly, calculate IY. IYY plus area into XY bar square. So reverse this. We want B will become D. D will become B now. 216 into 1 cube by 12 plus area 260 into 1 into 40.18 square plus 1, 1 into 150 cube into 12 into 2 times plus 2 times of 150 into 1 area into central distance 130 divided by 2 minus 40.18 square so 150 150 divided by 2 minus 40.18 square so it will be 1.34 in power of 6 millimeter power of 4 so polar moment will be is equal to 6.54 plus 1.34 in 10 raised to 6 so it will be 7.88 in 10 raised to 6 millimeter power of Four. Then immediately calculate load due to the total moment. So FP is equal to MR into divided by IP. So it is 20.92982 10 raised to 6 into 170.17 is your R. Power moment of energy is 7.88 10 raised to 6. So if you calculate this. So is FM. FM is equal to so it will be 453.1 Newton per millimeter square. Once you calculate this, calculate the cos theta. So cos theta 9.82 divided by 170.17. So it is 0.645. So R is equal to square root of FM square plus FP square plus 2 times of FP into FM into cos theta directly substituting here. So cos theta is equal to sorry R is equal to 178.5 square plus 453.1 square plus 2 times of 178.5 into 453.1 into 0.645 so r is equal to 583.68 newton mm so equate this to strength now to get the size of the belt so 583.68 is equal to 0.7 times of d into f u is 410 divided by root 3 into 1.25 so I'll be getting D value as 4.4 mm. So I cannot use 4.4 for next term, 5 mm. So therefore, provide 5 mm weld of E43 electrode. Okay, this is how we'll solve the problem. One more problem. If it is inclined load, what you should do, I'll teach you. Okay. Calculate. Calculate. The size of the weld. The size of the weld. Required. Required. For the bracket connection. Now the bracket connection shown in the figure shown in the figure assume assume F E four ten plate assume F E four ten grid plate okay the column
to connect with the bracket plate. Okay, now there's an inclined load of 120 kilonewtons with an inclination angle of 30 degree. Okay. The simple problem don't get afraid of this problem. Simple thing 200 distance measuring from here. So, this is also 200 they have given, and this depth is 400 of plate. So, this will be our E. Correct. So, three sides welding. First, find out the centroid. So, before starting centroid, separate the weld positions. So, one plate will be here, one will be here, here, one more will be here. Similar problem of first type only. One thing here, we are supposed to solve for the inclined angle. So, this will be your radial distance. This is theta, and this will be your x bar. So this is 400, 200, it is simple. So x bar, same old formula is x bar is equal to b square plus 2b to b plus b. So 200 square plus 2 times of 200 plus b is 400. So x bar is equal to 50 ml. So if this is 50, this will be 150. Correct. Now, so eccentricity is equal to 200 plus 150. So it is 350 mm. Nothing but this here. E. Once you find out the eccentric distance, similarly calculate the length of the weld. So length of the weld. So it is length of the weld 200, 400, 200. So it is 400 plus 200 plus 200. So it is 800 ml. Correct. Then next load due to direct shear. So it will be Fp is equal to P divided by L. So 120 kilonewtons divided by length is 800 mm. So it is 150 newton per mm. Okay. Then next torsional moment. So m is equal to p into e. So it is m here. The problem is now the load has been two times. You have to so, since an inclination angle, resolve this force into vertical and horizontal component. One vertical force will be there, one horizontal force will be there. Correct. So, vertical force 120 sin 30, horizontal force 120 cos 30. Correct. So, your resolution. So, 120 sin 30 into the distance is 350 vertical component so this into this and this into this half here ok so 120 cos 30 into 200 so m will be is equal to So E is sorry, in the M is equal to 215.39 10 raised to 3 Newton millimeter. So moments. Okay, next thing is needed in distance latch modem. Needed distance. R 
R is equal to square root of 150 square plus 200 square, it is 250 ml. So we got the radial distance R also. Now you have to calculate IP. So calculation of IP. So IX is equal to IXX plus area into I bar square. So two times of 200 into 1 cube divided by 12. So plus 200 area into 1 is the length into 200 square 400 divided by 2 for 200 plus 1 into 400 cube by 12 so it will be 21.3 to power of 6 and then power of 4 similarly calculate IYY IY is equal to IYY plus area into x square square so it is 1 into 200 divided by 12 plus 1 into 200 into 100 minus 50 whole square into 2 times plus 400 into 1 2 divided by 12 plus 400 into 1 is the area 50 square is your x bar okay now i will get the i y i as 3.2 3 3 10 raised to 6 millimeter power therefore IP will be is equal to 24.69 10 raised to 6 millimeter power so once you get this calculate the load due to torsion movement So FM is equal to M into R divided by IP. So M will be is equal to 215.39 and raised to 3. And the radial shear distance and radial distance R is equal to 250 mm. So IP is equal to 24.69 10 raised to 6. So your FM will be is equal to 2.183 Newton per mm. Okay, FM. But now before calculating the cos theta, what is the angle inclination angle to be? What is the cos theta there? You have to check there. Okay. So what we will do is To find out the angle of inclination with respect to the this is your angle of 30 degree so 120 kilonewton here so for this the perpendicular force will be your fm got it the opposing force will be your fp correct it will be forming a right angle to what like this so this will be your alpha this will be your beta so alpha beta 90 degree okay so all these three things will be making 180 degree so if you draw like this it will be this also beta will be there so this distance is 150 we all know that and this is 200 so looking at the figure alpha plus 90 degree plus beta is equal to 180 degree so looking at the figure from geometry tan beta is equal to 200 divided by 150 it is 53.13 
so your beta will be is equal to 53.13 so alpha will be is equal to 36.87 therefore cos theta is equal to 0.99 nothing but your 1 so cos theta is equal to 1 here therefore r is equal to square root of 150 square plus 2.183 square plus 2 times of 150 into 2.183 into cos theta is 1 so r is equal to 151.32 newtons if i equate it to 0.7 times of d into 410 divided by root 3 into 1.25 where d varies 1.14 mm so minimum this minimum the size of the world is 3 mm so provide 3 mm weld by e43 e43 or 55 whichever they have given or if you don't give you write select an equal of size and put up this so this is how will solve the inclined force so your fp will be somewhere like this This is how we will calculate, we will calculate the size of the weld when it is in the moment is parallel to the plane of the weld. When it is perpendicular, the procedure slightly changes. Okay. So how to calculate when this moment is acting perpendicular to the plane of the weld? Okay, we will do this now. So whenever the moment acting perpendicular to the to plane of the world so if this is a column one more beam or column is been connected beam has been connected like this So your welding will be here, here, on this side, other side also there will be welding, welded. Okay, this is your beam and this will be your column. So your load will be here and this is your eccentricity. If you have a look from this view, like this. Just I'm showing the eye level. So if I look like this, you can see the flange of the column with nothing on the plane. Centrally, the eye section I can see here. Okay, so top will be welded bottom also welded along with that the center of the web also is welded to the column flange so this will be your L1 L2 L3 L4 cut it so this is the cross section this is the sectional elevation.
okay so what is the first step here first find the length of the bed so calculate the total length of the bend so that is l is equal to l1 plus l2 plus l3 plus l4 next one calculate the load due to direct shear calculate load due to direct shear so fp is equal to p by l it is known as q also sometimes from textbook reference that's q then third one calculate the bending moment your torsional will not be affecting your bending will be affecting so m will be is equal to p into e next fourth one calculate i x x no need of polar moment only x bar will be acting here so next calculate the load due to moment that is fm same as your uh, voltage connections only fm is equal to m divided by i max sorry i x x into y max that is known as f a okay then your next one is resultant force And weld R is equal to square root of 3 FP square plus 3 FM square in the core we can find out like this 3 Q square plus FA if you refer to page number I think it is 80 of class 10.5.10.1 R is equal to square root of 3 Q square plus FA okay now finally Equate it to strength to find D. So R is equal to 0 0.7 times of the D thing size of the world into F U over root 3 gamma M W. So this is a pressure which if moment is acting in the perpendicular to the plane of the right okay we'll solve one or two problems on this determine the size of the world size of the world required required for the bracket connection for the bracket connection shown in figure shown in figure okay what they are given is they are given the column details so is wb 350 iswb 350 has been used as the column kg per meter one more beam has been attached of I section ISMB 350 at 52.4 kg per meter. So there is a 150 kilonewtons. This is E 150 ml. 
okay this will be your beam this is your hollow okay now we will draw the cross section so this will be your a section here okay the welding will be at the top bottom and this side so l1 l2 l3 l4 this is your 350 correct so if you refer to the handbook or steel tables so this will be width of the flange is 150 140 mm your l1 l2 will be your 140 mm of is mb 50 okay l3 and l4 will be depth of the beam minus two times the thickness of the flange plus r1 see look here my dear friends so if this is your i section it will be almost tapered like this okay this is your from here to here it is r1 and this is your thickness of the flange so thickness of the flange minus plus r1 threaded on the both sides if it if you take a one more view like this it will be like this from here to here this is r1 The remaining will be your thickness of the flange. Okay, there is a small curve will be there at the root. Okay, so this is thickness plus R. Why two times? Both flanges will be there. So here also top, bottom. So your depth of the beam is 350 minus two times the thickness of flange is 14.2 plus 14. So it is 293.6 mm. So L is equal to 140 plus 140 plus 293.6 plus 293.6. So it comes to 860 mm. Okay, the total length we are adding. Now. That's all. Once you get the length, calculate load due to direct shear. So your P is equal to P divided by L. So your P is P is one fifty kilonewtons. Number of three. All the length of the length is eight sixty. So it is one seventy four point four one newton mm. Then it is bending moment. So bending moment m is equal to p into e. So p is one fifty ten raised to three into e is one fifty mm. So it is two point twenty two point five ten raised to six newton mm. Okay. I X X is equal to two times of one into two ninety cube by twelve plus two times of one forty 
into one square divided by twelve plus one forty into one is the area into one by seven one seventy five. Three fifty divided by two is one seventy five square. Okay, so it is i x x will be is equal to Twelve point six four ten raised to six meter into power of four. Okay, this will be I X X. Now calculate the bending moment. So load due to bending moment. Bending moment. So F M is equal to M by I X X into Y max. Y max is nothing but d by two divided by two. So twenty two point five to six whole thing divided by twelve point six four times next to six into one seventy five. So it is three one one point seven five. Newton per m. So I got F P. Then F M. So R will be equal to square root of three F P square plus F M square. So three into one seventy four point four one square plus three eleven point seven five square. So R is equal to 434.10 newton per m. So equal R to yes, nothing but the second. So R is equal to 0.7 times of d into F U divided by root 3 into gamma m w. Okay, since they have not given the field weld, I'm taking as field weld. Field weld and the grade F E four ten, so four thirty four point one zero is equal to point seven times of D into four ten divided by root three into one point five D is equal to three point nine two mm. So minimum size is three mm. So go for five mm. Therefore, provide. Five mm size. So we calculate the size of the weld. Okay. So last problem of the session. So we'll do small problem, which is very important. It's an examination problem. Okay. It is an examination problem. An ISMP. This will be the question line examination. ISMP 500 at 86.9 kg per meter is connected. Is connected to the flange of column. The flange of column ISHP ISHP 400 at 82.2 kg per meter, the carrying carrying the vertical service load carrying the vertical service load of 200 kilonewtons. 200 kilonewtons at a distance of at a distance of 300 mm 300 mm from from 
flange of from flange of column from flange of column and horizontal horizontal service load horizontal service load of 50 kilonewtons 50 kilonewtons at at top of the flange top of the flange acting acting outwards outwards assume assume flange welds and web welds of same size of same size also assume shaft welding or shaft weld on FE410 grade steel design design the connections using using fillet weld fillet weld and sketch the and sketch the details an important question an ismb 500 at 86.9 kg per meter is connected to a flange of column ISHB 400 at 82.8 82.2 kg per meter carrying a vertical service load of 200 kilotons at a distance of 300 mm from the flange of the column and horizontal service load of 50 kilonewtons at the top of the flange acting outwards assume flange welds and web welds are of the same size also assume shaft welding fe 14 grade steel design the connection using the fillet weld and sketch the details so this is a problem they have given for you now first thing convert this problem into the figure okay then start the problem okay so first thing what he is telling ismb 500 at 86 point 9 kg is connected to the flange of the column so column is ishb 400 at 82.8 so first fire the JB 400 at 82.2 kg per meter. So, for this flange, the beam of ISMB has been connected. So, this is ISMB 500 at 86.9 kg meter, and there is one vertical load and horizontal load both are there so carrying a vertical service load of 200 service load means convert into factor load 200 1.5 is 300 correct 300 kilonewton vertical load with an distance of 300 from the flange of the column so this is e correct along with this horizontal service load of 50 kilo from the top of the flange acting outwards so this is 50 into 1.5 so it is 75 kilonewtons so this is a connection so your weld will be like here your weld will be here so l1 into l3 l4 four welds will be there okay so refer to the steel tables or 
so is mb 500 at 86.9 kg per meter so width of the flange is 180 mm thickness of the web flange is 17.2 mm so r1 is 17 mm okay now calculate the length so l1 is equal to l2 is equal to width of the flange it is 180 mm then l3 is equal to l4 is equal to overall depth 500 minus 2 times of thickness of the flange minus r1 so it is 431.6 mm so round it off with the 400 don't exceed 400 431 okay so therefore total length will be is equal to L is equal to 2 times of 180 plus 400 so it is 1160 mm okay so then next total load due to direct shear so fp is equal to p divided by l so it is 300 into 103.1160 so it is 258.62 newton per m okay now calculate the bending moment So m is equal to p into e. So your m is moment 300 kilonewtons into 300 plus 75 kilonewtons into 500 divided by 2. So depth it is acting. So it is 108.75 10 power of 6 newton mm. calculate ixx so it will be 2 times of 1 into 400 q vd cube by 12 same thing here also one, one is b is considered 1 d 400 plus 2 times of 1 q 180 into 1 q divided by 12 <coughs> this area 1 into 180 into 500 divided by 2 is 250 square so it is 33.167 10 raised to 6 millimeter power of 4. Once you get IXX, next you know how to calculate the load due to bending moment. So load due to bending moment so fm is equal to fd plus fb so this is given in your is 800 page 80 so fd is equal to 75 into 10 raised to 6 divided by 1160 fd is nothing but your horizontal force fb is for the moment so you have to make this horizontal load correction fd plus fb so it is 64.6465 newton per mm okay just fd is nothing but your horizontal low horizontal force divided by total length that's all okay F, fb is nothing but i i m divided by i x x into m i i same thing so it is here FB is very important here FB. where FD is equal to horizontal force by level So 
y of b is equal to m divided by ixx into y max. So i m is equal to 1 8.75 y max is d by 2, so it is 250, whole thing divided by 33.167 10 raised to 6. So your f b with is equal to 819.274 newton per mm. So f m is equal to 883.92 newton per mm. Just add those both to then calculate r. r is equal to 3 f p square plus f m square. So 3 times of fp is 258.62 whole square plus 883.92 whole square. So equate r to yes sir. Directly can get the answers, no problem. So r is equal to 990.94 newton per mm. So 990.94 equal to 0 0.7 times of D into 410 root into 0.25. So your D will be is equal to 7.47 mm. Therefore provide 8 mm size well. 8 mm will Size on all sides. This so will calculate the problem. If they are given the horizontal force also, what you are supposed to do is this thing has to be rectified here. So, therefore, I will show in the If you refer page number 80, 79 deals with what are the design different types of events, formulas are here, just try to look out there. So these are the fillet welds. Okay. So like here, F A is equal to square root of F A square plus P Q F square, where Q, F A is going to be right there, just I have shown you in last problem, okay. We just go on reading this session, this classes is depends upon the field building, okay. Combination everything has been shown here. So this is where you are supposed to get this. Okay. So page number 79 and 80 will lead the 
of IS codes will tell you about the welding part. Other than this, all thing from page number 78 to 80, when 81 to 80 is enough, I think so for you people. Just refer this pages for the welded connection. Formulas have been there. I have given the clear formulas while solving the problems. Okay, you can use this also. The specifications which are given for the welding connections and fillet weld everything has been given here. Then I will show the partial safety factor where it is available. To refer page number 30, look here, page number 30. So, sham fabrications, field fabrications, so friction group types, so welds, look at the sharp, it is 1.25, field, it is 1.5. Gamma M0 1.1, Gamma M0 1.1, Gamma ML it is 1.25. This is the partial safety factor which is given in the Gamma MB. And again, if you go for page number 32 and 33, block shear formulas are in here only. Keep in mind ABG, AVN will be both for the equal, equal for the weld. Okay, ATN, ATG is both are same, no grass or net area in the welding, both will be same. Okay, and if you want to find out the rupture strength, this TDN is equal to 0.89 FPD by gamma ML. Okay, so formulas have been there in the page number 32 and 33. Just refer for the formulas. Same old formula holds good for the work, voltage connections as well as the welder connections. Only if you check the applications and get the formulas to be used okay i'm ending the session of welded connections for today thank you